Howdy folks, Ed here, Waters West Fly Fishing Outfitters. Today we're going to be tying Bjorn's Flash Tail Stinger Prawn. Uh, the Flash Tail Stinger Prawn is uh, one of the most popular uh, flies for Chinook Salmon, uh, for swinging for Chinook Salmon. Um, it was originated by uh, Bjorn Beach back in the past. And today we're going to be tying it in the green and blue aka Seahawk color, which is one of the most popular combos for kings. So, here we go. Maybe starting off with a pre-tied shank, we'll do a separate video on how we tie shanks. Pretty picky about it. Anyway, throw that shank there on your vise. Make sure it's nice and tight so you're not screaming later when it pops off during the crucial step. Start your thread on the shank. Two wraps, one crossing over to lock it in. Trim that tag end, run your thread to the back, and then you're going to take a little chunk of chartreuse bucktail. You don't want too much on there because then your fly's not going to sink and it's not going to swim. Which are pretty important when you're tying these kind of flies. Probably the most important things. You're going to take a little clump of your bucktail about three quarters of a pencil width get all the fluff out get with your fingers get that fluff out we don't want that fluff it's not good for nothing get that fluff out check the tips make sure there are no crazy long stragglers out there that looks pretty good Now we're going to take our handy dandy super glue. You can use any kind of super glue, just make sure it is a super glue. Don't be using none of that Elmer's wood glue or no nonsense like that. We're going to take our little clump of bucktail. Try to line it up so it extends at least to the end of the hook, maybe a little past the hook. Doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't really matter. Get a couple loose wraps on there. Make sure it's where you want it. Then lift up on your bucktail and crank it down tight. Make sure it's not going anywhere. A couple more in there. Get nice and solid. Work that thread back up to the front. Ram it down there, flare those ends up. Take your scissors, cut off all the excess there. Doesn't have to be a super neat job right here because you're just going to cover it up with your thread. Now, we're going to get our flash of boo. Electric blue flasher boo. You know it works because it's electric. Cut that. And we're going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 strands of flasher boo. It's very important. No, it's not. But this is about the right amount of flash of boot that gives us the look we're going for. Just take your flash of boot, double it a look, double it over your thread like that. Pull it down tight on the shank. Make sure it's looking pretty good there on top. Wrap towards the back, and then once you're getting almost to where the um, bucktail was tied in there. Use your thumbnail and kind of work that flashable around. You want to make sure it's spread out over the top of the bucktail. You can see it's covering all the bucktail up over the top like that. That's kind of what we want. Once you've got your flashable tied in there, take your scissors, pull up on it, and then just give it a little taper cut. That is going to make your fly look a lot nicer and the 
varying lengths of the flashaboo that you get when you do this taper cut will give it a lot more movement it'll keep them from sticking to each other and it'll just result in a better more fishy catch and fly take our uh, Danville chenille fluorescent yellow size medium peel about um, however much that is eighth of an inch expose the core so you can tie it in Three wraps will do ya. Work your thread forward. Now we're gonna put our lead eyes on there before I forget. This is a step that I always forget. So I'm making sure I don't forget this time. A little nab of super glue. Extra small presentation lead eyes. My favorite, about the only kind I use. Except when I don't. A couple figure eight wraps, get it in position, make sure it's centered, you don't want it off to the side. Once you've got it in the right position, give it a couple more figure eights, and then go down and around the eyes. This will help a lot to keep them from spinning on you. Now once you got them lashed down or you feel pretty confident they're not gonna go anywhere, just slap another little bit of super glue on there just to be safe now we're going to work our thread back just a little bit about that far and put a little bit more super glue over the top of the shank Chenille's pretty stout, but those kings have big teeth sometimes, so you don't want that chenille coming off after the first fish. Pull that chenille pretty tight there, and then start wrapping it. You're going to make touching wraps where just the very ends of the fibers of the chenille are touching. You don't want to be really wrapping it tight against itself, because then you'll end up using way too much of it, and your fly won't sink as well etc etc but make sure that when you are wrapping your chenille you're pulling it tight against that shank the reason for that is because the way the chenille is made the uh, core is braided onto the fibers and the materials so if you don't pull it tight like that on some chenilles you'll be um, the material will just come right out of the core which you don't want that you want your flies to last because you put a lot of time and effort into them Tie that chenille off there, couple, three, four, five wraps, whatever. Clip her off. Get a little bit of fluff off. Tie nice and looking. Looking nice. Now for the next step, uh, the original pattern calls for stretch flex, which you can get at your local fly shop, or this fly shop, even better. Um, if you don't have stretch flex, you can use six pack rings. If you fish for salmon a lot, I bet you've got a lot of six pack rings laying around, especially in this day and age. Wrap that stretch flex on just like that. We're going to set it aside for a second. And we're going to start with our first marabou feather, going with a chartreuse. Fish Hunter Fluorescent Chartreuse UV. Already peeled the bottom fluff off. You know, make sure you start where the stem gets kind of bendy. You don't want to be messing around with no stiff stems. That's just a recipe for frustration. And we're going to get the tip of our marabou here. Pull it back a little bit. Got a little triangle in there for a tie-in point. Tie it on there. Goes about. Tie it in there on the bottom of the shank, or the top or the side, doesn't matter. Next, we're gonna take our. Oh, make sure that thing's tied on there. Nice. Good. Next, we're gonna 
take our hackle pliers. You don't need hackle pliers for Marabou, but oh, let's see, wasn't tight on there. No biggie. We'll just go back, unwrap the thread. Now should be a little more stout. It doesn't need to be completely bulletproof tied in there at this point. So you're gonna be wrapping over it, but that helps. Next, you want to get some moisture on there. Make that marabou a little bit easier to work with. Everybody tells me not to lick my fingers when I do this, but I've been doing it for a long time and I don't know, we're still rolling. Wrap that marabou a little bit forwards, brushing it back so it lays, lays nice and flat. Tie that thing off. Again, doesn't need to be very clean here because this is all going to get covered up. Clip that stem. Now, take your whatever tool, your scissors, dubbing needle, whatever's handy that's got a pointy end and just spread that marabou aside just make sure you got about the same amount on both sides of the fly so it swims right it doesn't get funny next we're going to take a little chunk of that chenille that we cut off earlier and do the same process again tie it in there in front of the marabou Helps if you got a little uh, eraser or a piece of foam sticking your hook to keep it from sticking you. I like to live dangerously, so I don't tie that chenille in. A little drop of super glue, because why not? Pretty tight against that marabou just to keep it flowing back nice and out of the way for when we do the front collar. Wrap that up almost all the way to the dumbbell eyes just to make a nice little bump for our front marabou collar. Tie that guy off. off rip out that additional fluff in there that's not doing anybody any good and there now I'm gonna throw a couple half hitches in here and I'm gonna cut this white thread off this isn't crucial but I'm just trying to make a real nice fancy fly here or as fancy as you can get with six inch long Chinook flies so I've got this looking pretty good. Now I'm going to grab my blue thread. This is considerably finer than the other thread. Um, I was using two tendonier for the main body of the fly. You can think of that as the, uh, it's like the foundation of the house. You know, I was using bricks and stuff. And then we switched to the finer thread, which would be more like your, your trim and whatnot. Make it look pretty. And this only has to couple, hold a couple feathers down. Uh, so it doesn't need to be super strong thread and also we're gonna put some super glue on there Put that thread on there make sure it doesn't fall off and Now we're ready for our And we're back had to answer the phone It's pretty busy here sometimes next one. We got our kingfisher blue mare boot Gonna do the same move as we did with the last one Peel back the tip there, or pull back the tip, don't peel it. Cut a little triangle there for a tying point. Nice little triangle. Tie that thing on there. Just trying to make sure this one stays in the first go. That was really embarrassing on the first one. Get it on there. 
that's it. Trust the Loon Outdoors hackle plier. Not the most finesse hackle plier out there, but it is one of the strongest gripping ones. Get a little moisture on there. Wrap it around, brushing those fibers back. Get them nice, neat, out of the way. Tie off the stem. Two wraps over the top, one around the back, and one more to secure it. Secure that stem. We're gonna go through and do the same thing. Just pick these out. Sides. Alright, go. Got to take a shape now. And we're gonna put some more super glue on it. Just a little dab will do ya. Now Take that stretch flex we tied in earlier, pull it over the marabou. This is going to keep all our marabou down towards the belly of the fly so we get the desired stinger prawn effect. A couple wraps over the top, one below, one more to lock it in. Pull that stretch flex. Not super tight because then it'll recoil back after you cut it, but pretty taut. And then just try to trim it down as close as you can there. Pretty good. Next, we're going to take a whiting, black lace, white hen cape, dyed kingfisher blue. Super cool product. We'll love them. We got quite a few colors here at the shop on a rotating basis. Sometimes we've got a lot of them, sometimes not so much. Give us a call and we'll tell you what we got. So I take that feather, I peeled all the fluff off the bottom of the feather, get it to about the length I want, which is kind of overlapping the tail there a little bit. Again, not super critical, but proportions. Paying attention to proportions will help you make better looking flies. Oops, skip the step. Before you tie it in, you want to take your fingernail and run it down the stem like that. Kind of flatten it out a little bit. This will help keep the um, feather from rolling on you when you tie it in. Get some nice straight wings on there. Well, these wings are pretty easy since they're just going on their flat. But flattening the stems like that will help a lot if you're tying spay flies, gat glasso flies, orange herons, etc. So get that one on there, just a couple of wraps to kind of hold it in position. And then we're going to take a second feather from the same cape, just a little bit smaller. To complete that shell back. Again, same move fingernails down the stem to flatten it out, keep it from rolling on you. There over the top. So we just wrap, make sure it's where we want it. A couple more, and then we're gonna figure eight over the dumbbell eyes. That way we don't end up with a huge ugly head on there and our wings still secure. Then I like to push the bottom of the stems back through the eye. Sometimes you need a little assistance if your stem is real short. There we go, pull those guys back. And take a couple more wraps under them to really lock them down. Make sure this lasts more than one fish. Nearly two or three. Clip those stems off. And 
and we're gonna go for a couple more wraps here just to really make sure this thing's nice and secure we're gonna finish her off quick hand whip finish Safety sake. Whip your thread off. And you guessed it, a little bit more super glue. Bam, bam, bam. Bjorn's Flashtail Stinger Prawn, the fly that revolutionized swinging for kings.